David Shemans and Martin Fossett from Ricardo PLC. Your, your company has recently launched uh, quite an impressive engine for um, a, a customer, McLaren, mm-hmm. uh, and that's really where your company is best known, the motorsport industry, but you do a lot more than that, don't you? Could, perhaps you, could you ask my question, is Ricardo a manufacturer? Well, I think externally we're well known for the motorsport activities that we do, from Audi Le Mans through to Formula One through to the McLaren engine. Uh, as well as Bugatti, Veyron, transmission systems which we designed. So externally best known. In the industry, we're actually best known for working with mass market car companies, agricultural companies, off-highway commercial vehicles and uh, marine engines. Uh, And to answer your question, are we a manufacturing company? Uh, Well, behind me you can see very much that we are. Uh, We cover the whole value chain from both the engineering of the product right the way through to manufacturing in niche volumes. So are we a manufacturing company in 100,000 units? No, we're not, but certainly up to a few thousand units per year. Yes, we can do that. And and the company has perhaps changed its uh, focus or uh, at least its activities from being a core uh, design engineering business and consultancy into what now is becoming more a... um, not, not wholly, but more a, an assembly and manufacturing type of company where you'll build a project from start to finish. Can you give me an example of a project where you're doing that? Okay. Well, I think um, we, we will entertain the manufacturing element if the client wants us to offer a one-stop shop from design right the way through. Um, the McLaren engine that's uh, been built behind me is a good example. We did the engineering, the design, the development, and now the final assembly, uh, shipping those engines to McLaren for their new supercar. Uh, Another good example is the uh, Foxhound program that we're doing for the UK MOD. Not only did we develop that vehicle, but we're also assembling that vehicle as well from the Shulman facilities. In terms of your business strategy and your your raise on debt, really, um, why you're here is to deliver two things for customers. One is performance and the other is emissions. Can you give an example of a project that's sort of driven the emissions agenda for for, uh, Ricardo? I think probably the best example is um, that we can take engines for customers and improve their emissions performance. We've done that for a number of the volume passenger car companies that you household names you'd be familiar with, uh, companies such as Volvo. And we have uh, improved the performance of their engines in order to comply with new legislation and in order to improve the competitiveness of their car, where um, CO2 emissions, for example, are a marketing issue for them. Um, and and other, other examples as well, not just in automotive, but um, it, might be, it might surprise many people to find out you work across <coughs> the whole spectrum of engineering applications in both uh, beyond uh, automotive and into marine and power generation. Yeah, I, maybe I can give an example of some of these. Um, if you, uh, we've developed engines for motorcycles for BMW. Obviously the passenger car market we've talked about for all of the mainstream manufacturers that you will have heard of and many that you won't have heard of in China, uh, we work with from transmissions through to engines through to hybrids. Uh, On commercial vehicles, uh, trucks, buses, uh, we develop emissions uh, technologies for engines for that. Uh, Off-highway equipment, uh, JCB is a very um, well-respected customer of ours, uh, excellent company where we've worked with many years on engine design uh, for JCB. Uh, up to um, power generation equipment, uh, whether that be very, very novel technology. Uh, We worked with in the wind farm industry on gear couplings and also compressor devices. Uh, We've worked with um, power generation genset companies on how do you improve the fuel economy of the genset and how to improve the emissions. Up to the marine industry, uh, where we are helping with engine design, both for small offboard engines right the way up to large um, engines for, the, for ships. So a complete spectrum and the public in many cases hasn't heard of Ricardo but within the industry as a business to business services company uh, we're very well known. Uh, David you yourself were involved in the, um, the pre, pre-runner to the uh, Automotive Council in trying to build a sort of better vision for how we can secure a British automotive industry. Mm-hmm. Talk about that work and perhaps who succeeded you on, on that, on that okay. council. Well, that was a, it was a very important piece of work that was conducted over the last two to three years. Uh, it was headed by Richard Parry Jones, a former uh, Ford very senior executive, sponsored by uh, the government. And it was really talking about how do we establish and ensure that we have an automotive industry in the next 15 to 20 years. So that was looking at aspects of why do companies like Nissan, Ford, 
uh, BMW set up and their manufacturing plants in the UK, how can we encourage them to stay in the UK? And that's a lot to do with working practices, the quality of engineering graduates that go into the manufacturing plants. And it's worth saying we have some of the most efficient manufacturing plants in the UK. So we, we do have that expertise. It also looked at the tier one supply base, and this is where there is a gap in the UK. Um, GK and Aside, a preeminent company, we have very few large global British owned uh, tier one companies. And they are tremendously important because that is where a lot of the design and technology is developed. So if you look in Germany, companies like Bosch, Siemens, Continental, uh, we simply don't have that expertise or, or core mass in the UK. And the Automotive Council was looking at how do we establish that? How can we grow our own tier one base? How can we encourage overseas tier ones to establish in the UK? Uh, and then the final part was really looking at the education and skills. How do we make sure that the raw material of the future automotive industry, engineering graduates, how do we encourage um, students to become engineers and how do we create jobs for them once they graduate? So it was, a, it was a pretty broad spectrum that we covered, which you would expect that's what's required. Um, we also looked at the technologies. You can't invest in every technology. So which technologies should the UK invest in? which we could make sticky to the UK. Mm. And certainly one of my colleagues, Neville Jackson, has taken over from me, uh, supporting the Automotive Council, focusing very much on the technology forecasting overview and providing Ricardo's insight into that governmental um, sponsored body to uh, help set the strategy for the automotive industry. Um, what's your view on the, the, the skills gap and, and what are you doing to get, get more young people into seeing how, how engineering can work as a career? Okay, well, well, Ricardo has a very strong graduate recruitment program. We also have partnerships with schools and colleges uh, local to our three sites in the UK. Uh, and we believe it's really important to get to the, the um, really important to get to the school children early. So by the time they get to the teenage years, that's probably too late. So we're very keen to get into schools and to form that interest in, in engineering at an early stage of their school career. Um, it's also important, I think, to take engineers out of the universities and put them into engineering. So many of them go into the city or financial careers, uh, and that's a shame. But all that training has gone to a different application. So we're, we're very keen to maintain strong partnerships with universities, with colleges for some of the uh, people you see behind me on the manufacturing line have come out of local further education colleges from an automotive engineering college um, qualification into our manufacturing facility here in Shaw. And perhaps just to sign off, I mean, here we are at the uh, MP412C engine assembly facility. It's a brand new um, building. You, you, a few months ago it was, uh, I believe, a car park. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at it now, it's a very clinical uh, assembly environment which, which, looks, uh, which looks fantastic. A lot of work has gone into the design, the configuration of this factory to make sure it's a very lean operation. Uh, and and that, that's taken some, some skill, hasn't it, to sort of finesse the the lean requirements of a big production line, mm -hmm. many thousands of units, with the more sort of batch production of a, of a sort of single, single cell environment. Yeah. How, how have you done that work? Well, we started from a clean sheet of paper, so we've been able to apply best practice right from the start. Uh, we have recruited some very good uh, people from uh, organisations such as GK and Toyota, and we've applied rigorously lean manufacturing tools and techniques right from the start, which has enabled us to achieve, in a very short period of time, a very high standard of quality and manufacturing output. Uh, how many engines do you expect to make uh, from this facility? We, we can make uh, 2,000 a year from our, a single shift, and if we went to more than one shift, that would obviously increase substantially. We also have room for expansion. The, the way the line has been designed, it can be expanded quite considerably if we wish to with further investment. So perhaps your plan is to take this uh, expertise, <coughs> this capability and do more um, series production, perhaps yeah. in smaller numbers than OEMs require, but for other yeah. uh, car companies. Abs absolutely. I think what we've demonstrated with this facility behind us, uh, you are right, 18 months ago this was a car park and uh, I had my intention to put a five-a-side football pitch on there, but uh, we've ended up with a manufacturing plant, which is fantastic. But within 18 months, developed an engine, put up a plant, recruited people from Toyota and GKN, and we can replicate this uh, in other activities for other clients and in other parts of the world on Ricardo facilities. So very much this is now part of our business, and uh, we've demonstrated that uh, we have the skill base within Ricardo. Well,
gentlemen, very best of luck with it. Uh, David Sherman's and Martin Fossett of Ricardo PLC, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.